Chris, how's it going? So today is kind of a continuation from yesterday. Paul and Aaron have been out working on planting the trees that we didn't get planted yesterday from our load that we got down at the garden center. Are you struggling there? A little bit. <laughs> this is the B, oh, the B&B inside of the peat pot. Yeah. And I bet this one's super, super heavy. Yeah, I'm not able to really lift it, so I'm just trying to rip it off. Sure. So the four that we had left out here were the four heaviest, the two Austrian pines, the sweet gum, and the parosia. And this is the last one, right? You're almost done. No, I totally skipped the tree over there. Oh, you did? How <laughs> funny. Uh, so we'll come back here after they're done and take a look at the whole thing finished, but I am going to go work on some of those new perennials. I'd really like to get the Veronica in the ground. There's Paul right behind me. He's got some compost and possibly the blue limber pine that we picked up yesterday as well and it is gorgeous out today i mean you can see what we're dealing with it's like sun on and off but what's the temp right now let's look 62 62 with a high of 71 today i mean you can't get more perfect than that for planting also pedro and his guys are here finishing up the polymeric sand in between the stones by the pond so we can take a look at that when we're all done planting today Woo! as well really bumpy right here. Look at these, aren't they gorgeous? So I went over the varieties yesterday. This is the pink potion and this is the purple illusion. I'm gonna save a few of these back for a different project, but I'd like to get the bulk of them planted today. I will show you where I have the pink potion in another part of our garden and it's looking beautiful at the moment. It's already been sheared back once and it's uh, coming back for its second bloom right now and so i can show you what it looks like you know a year down the road uh, instead of just out of its containers but anyway let's grab some of these and get going All right guys, I've got the Veronica, I've got the Blue Limber Pine, but I wanted to show you the pink potion that's already in the garden. Now there are 13 of them in this drift right here, which I think is what I've got back here. I just did a rough count and I think there are 13 of that variety. So we'll be able to make a nice large drift somewhere with these. Now I think that these look so extra good because of the pollinators <laughs> flying all around them. I, when I see that, it just makes me so happy. There are honeybees just everywhere right now. And so, like I said, this is their second flush of bloom and they are creating more. So you can see a whole bunch more bloom spikes and we've got another good, I would say month left before we start getting pretty cold um, and they'll stop producing quite as much and they'll start kind of dwindling, but we get to enjoy them for a big part of our season. Now around them, we have the saffron finch supertunias looking exceptional. Oh my goodness. That's actually a beautiful pairing, the Veronica, with that kind of lemony yellow. Isn't that pretty? There's the Blue Fortune Agastache right there. We've got Pufferfish uh, Hydrangeas. There's some Iris, which I love that grassy texture there. Some hardy geraniums. There's some Autumn Joy Sedum over there. They're just a beautiful, beautiful plant. Really tough to get it wrong with this one, honestly. Just give them full sun, consistent water, and they're happy plants. I really love this bed from this view in particular. It's really filling in beautifully. Isn't that funny how you kind of get like a specific angle that you like something the best, but, and it changes, you know, throughout the season as things kind of go in and out, but like this Autumn Joy looks awesome. Love that grassy island in there. Then you can see the pink spiky blooms. It just all looking really good. And those puffer fish are gonna get big enough to fill in this space too. Like there'll be a nice larger size shrub right in here. Not large, but you know larger than all of these. So we're gonna find a couple of spaces much like this one right here to pop all of these Veronica and then a space that can accommodate this evergreen because it tops at 15 feet wide, I think. Yeah, 25 by 15, extra blue limber pine. I just love that so much. Okay, so we'll get them planted, then we'll take a look.
I got everything in the ground and so did Paul and Aaron. It's looking so great. I ended up out here because this is where I spread all of the extra dirt that I dig out of the ground. You probably see that I dig my hole and put some of the dirt in the plant container and that way it kind of eliminates a bunch of mess. And that's why I use a shovel at this point of the year, uh, at least this year, over uh, an auger. Unless I'm planting a ton of something, it's a lot less messy just to use a shovel and our mulch is looking really good right now and I don't want to mess it up. So the next time I use an auger will probably be when I get ready to plant bulbs. But anyway, there's the soil right there. Just kind of spread it out-ish. And here are the rest of the trees that Paul and Aaron got in today. So this Austrian pine right here looks so good. Look at how pretty that is. And you'll notice everything has been planted high, <laughs> some more than others. Uh, the one, the last one, it looks like it's real high. I don't know, but you guys know we run our drip line right here across the soil surface, and then we're gonna bring in a bunch of compost anyway to cover over the top of all of this powder. So it's going to raise the soil level, and that's kind of what Aaron is trying to avoid, having uh, an issue where we have to be really careful around the trees. So if we plant them high, one, it will help water drainage away from the uh, you know, trunk of the plant, but also it'll allow us the ability just to come in and cover how we need to cover and not worry about burying the plants too deep. So anyway, this is one that went in as well today, the Parosha. Vanessa Parosha grows 28 by 14, amazing fall color. This one, the Austrian, what did it say? Like 25 feet wide, 20 to 25 feet wide. It can grow like 60-ish feet tall. I think that's what the tag said. They get enormous. Here's the Warpelsden. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but sweet gum tree. It's got a really unique look to it, I think. The leaves are really cool. And then the last one that went in today is the Austrian up in the corner, which I won't all walk all the way there, but it's just starting to look so fun with these different varieties of trees out here. And it's gotten a little bit breezy out here. It feels really nice. Let's head to the South Garden for the next stuff, next plants. Okay. As we come down this rock pathway and turn to our left, you'll see the pine tree. Look at that right there. Kind of masking that hose link, at least from this angle. And this is the angle we, you know, drive up to the cut flower garden like this. So I felt like this was a really good spot to put that pine. So again, 25 feet tall, 15 feet wide. So it will fill in this section pretty nicely. And then our spring grove arborvitae will be a nice kind of complement to it. They'll get similar-ish in height, this one, and similar in, in uh, spread as well. It'll be interesting to see how they, how they both do. And then I went ahead in with the Purple Illusion Veronica right here. And how many did I have? Eight of those. I held five back for another project, uh, but planted those right around the base of the new Dervella called Kodiak Fresh, which is already starting to put on its fall color. But this only gets two to three feet tall and wide. So that'll take up that space and maybe even like kind of touch the Veronica in front. I think that'll be really pretty. Really happy with this little spot. So I actually had 15 of the pink potion Veronica. Five of them ended up out here and 10 on the west side. I always kind of like to start backed up so you can get a feel for the space. But as you walk down this rock pathway, you can see the five Veronica tucked in right there. We just recently planted these denim and lace Russian sage. So I think it's gonna be a really pretty pairing to have the purple with a little bit of pink and we'll start a drift of something else right in here. Maybe something like a grassy texture. I'm not sure, but anyway, I think they look pretty right there. Okay, so as we enter in this area, walk down the brick pathway, you can see the pink potion tucked in right beneath the Caryopteris right here. So yeah, two, four, six, eight, ten of them right here. It's so pretty. Oh, that pink too with that blue. Gorgeous. We have some anic, anic roses, anic, anic roses. <laughs> anyway, lots of pink in this area, but you know we're sticking with pink, purple, white, and then some chartreuse, and it really is filling in. Now there are some spots like right here, right here. See that little pocket? Right in here and a couple more hold on right here 
and right here that I've saved for iris. I have some already in here, but I want to amp up the amount that I have, and I like that great big, bold, strappy texture. See how when you look at this space right here, it's mostly green foliage, but there's a lot of different textures going on, and seeing that bold, grassy iris texture there, I think is really nice. So I wanna keep repeating that throughout. So that's what's gonna go. You don't have the iris there, here, here and so on and so forth. So anyway, the only other spots I have in this whole flower bed, like there's this little section right up front. We'll find something real pretty to put right here. And I think that's it. I focused more on this garden last year. I've really done hardly anything in this space this year in terms of planting. We've done maintenance, you know, trimming up elderberries and things like that, but not a whole lot of planting this season. Okay, now. We get to go look at the pathway. Pedro and his guys already left. He did pull over here when I was just finishing up planting. He said it looks really good. He was one bag short on the sand, so he's gotta go grab another one and finish it probably day after tomorrow. Uh, but he said it's awesome, so looking forward to it. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, it looks so pretty. I wanted to start on this side because I know that they started here this morning. So I'm guessing that side is the one they haven't finished yet, but it looks gorgeous. I wanted a sand that did not contrast the rocks too much because I want the rocks to shine and I don't really want to notice the the cracks between you know or the veining between the rocks. I wanted to notice the rocks and you certainly can or certainly do rather. Oh oh I'm just so thrilled with this. Look at how gorgeous. And now that this part's done we can come in and remulch all of this and kind of tidy up the edges fill in all of this right here make it look all neat again look at how pretty uh, now he did wait on this area too which we'll probably fill in just so that we can remember where the conduit was for um whatever i don't know aaron had a conduit put under there in case we wanted to electric or whatever so it's under this stone and they'll probably fill in with the sand and give us some extra so that if we ever have to pop that out we can replace the rock and redo the sand right there but oh i just want to stand up here and look at it. So, so pretty. Oh my goodness. Water's looking good too. Look at the fish in there. Look at that. I did get in the pond a couple of days ago and I cleaned up the plants again. There's one over here, that green one that just wants to spread everywhere. So I'm pretty, I'm trying to be pretty diligent about keeping that one cut back and then the lily of course spreads everywhere as well I tried to clean off the tops of the leaves but you guys our water is so hard that's just kind of how it is I'm trying to see if i can find the shark i see all the koi oh there's a couple i will see all six of the koi okay now where's the shark always toward the bottom that fish totally matches the color of all the rocks too anyway look at this Oh, well, we'll get a good idea again, kind of a before and after shot here. We've got the before with the gaps and the after without the gaps. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Wow. They've just done a beautiful job. And you guys, that is going to do it for today's projects. Really happy with the progress, super happy with the trees out in the new property because that just feels like, I don't you always thank yourself for getting those trees and evergreens in because the sooner you do that, the quicker they'll grow and fill in and it'll feel like more like your space. And then this here, I wouldn't change a single thing about it. Not the whole area. I love the whole pond, the area around it, the patio, everything, the pathways. It's just, amazing how much it has transformed this space back here and this is coming from somebody who struggled wanting to get a, get rid of those boxwoods back here because they were the nicest boxwoods probably on our property um, and they had been here for a long time but the whole space it was kind of boring um, and it was tidy and everything but we had no reason to come back here and we've used this space more since the end of july when the pond was initially completed than we used it the prior six years of living here i mean we just came back here because we had to do maintenance or we had to do this or that, not because we really wanted to use the space. And Greg from Aquascape, you know, who um, put this pond in for us, he uh, said it's gonna transform your whole space and you're gonna find yourself wanting just to spend time out here. This is where you're gonna wanna be and he was right. We're out here every single night. I love it, so much fun. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.